Visualization is the ability to be able to see your data, um, to actually see what's happening within your data. I mean, we've all heard of um, big data, data science, those are the buzzwords currently. And um, the art of being able to visualize that data and see hidden, um, um, hidden information that you would not otherwise be able to see when you run your data analysis, that's what visualization helps um, our staffs and faculties um, be able to do at Clemson University. I mean, there's just been a ton of software that we've been using. Um, Unity 3D has been the main thing, um, working with VR, and then I also worked with a touch table last semester, uh, using multi-touch to create molecules and uh, basically STEM research for younger children to be able to create molecules and learn how to do chemistry. And so it's been taking a lot, I've had to learn a lot of different applications and software and take those and learn them and then become advanced and proficient in those and take that and create new things. So it's been really cool just trying to uh, learn and then apply that knowledge to create new things. So say like if you was in the chemistry department and you wanted to conduct experiments, instead of doing them like actually going to the lab, you can do it virtually. So say you want to make a bomb, you can't really make a bomb in real life without blowing stuff up. You can make it in the virtual environment to see how we react then. So if for, if for the classroom settings, physics, chemistry, testing limits, things like that, I think it'd be great for those. And what our, our department um, tries to do is we provide um, resources such as um, visualization infrastructure, such as the touch table. Uh, we also have um, the visual, like the one behind me right now. We also have the 3D video walls that are available in the World's Innovation Center that we use um, to demonstrate our um, um, staff's staff research, our research, and um, we also have um, head-mounted displays, which are the Oculus Rift, the Microsoft HoloLens. And these are um, interesting devices that are just coming to the market, interesting virtual reality devices. Just coming to the market, um, it's uh, uh, extremely interesting, very innovative, and um, we, we're very glad to be at the cutting edge of this type of technologies. Okay, so basically virtual reality is um, a different world. That's the best way to explain it. Um, you put on a headset and you're completely somewhere else. Um, they can do 3D rendering with it. You can create your own models, all that sort of thing. So firstly, what we've been working on, um, Joseph actually, uh, he created an, uh, a 3D tour of Little John, the new Little John Coliseum. And that was the first big project. And he'd already been working on that when I came on. Um, and then now, currently, where he's actually starting a driving simulation using VR. Um, and I'm helping write the code with that as well. But he uses a new uh, technology, Leap Motion, so that you'll actually be able to uh, pretend to drive the car without a wheel or anything, just with the headset on. It's really interesting there. Um, the growth of VR within, um, the, with, with interest in, from Facebook, Microsoft, Google, I mean, these are major companies to name a few. It's very, it's been very great for us because initially we would be conducting research in a, what you call a cave. This is a, a big, massive display that costs um, thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, at one point, probably half a million you could easily spend on it. Um, um, but now, with the virtual reality assets coming in at just um, a couple of hundreds, it means that we are able to showcase the um, uniqueness, um, the wow factor that this research has. We are also able to showcase to people how they can view their research. Instead of using simple 2D screens or monitors, they can actually see in 3D. Um, they can move closer to it. They can see it in life-size form. Um, this has really given us um, um, a new way to reach people that we would not be able to reach. Most importantly, and this is something I'm just talking about from a personal perspective, it's really allowed us to reach out to potential groups like underrepresented groups as well, um, which to get them very interested in STEM programs, um, which in the long run is an area that um, you know the U.S. and most countries are actually currently uh, concentrating on to actually get people more interested in STEM programs and visualization is a way to do 